people to, to orbit. Uh, it's been a long time. Long um, road. 18 years. Yeah. Kid, kid, could be, kid could be in college by now. <laughs> well, the thing, that, the thing that concerns me most right now is that unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars. Not, I'll be lo yeah. This is my biggest concern. Um, I mean, Crew Dragon was, we, we, we've already taken it to the space station and back. Mm -hmm. you know, so people, a lot of people aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had like a, basically a dummy, you know. So, um, and then since what then, we've done massive amount of testing, you know, pushing all the corner cases, uh, and uh, just a, a truly ridiculous amount of, of, of testing. It's like, Definitely hat us off to the Dragon engineers and supporting team at NASA for going through a truly staggering number of tests. Um, now, that, now that that said, uh, Dragon really is just a low Earth orbit transport vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really just it's capable of taking a few people at what is still a very high cost to Earth orbit. I mean, technically, we could send people around the moon on Dragon, but I'm not sure we'd want to. Um, it's too, too small. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. So it, it, it's good, good to get this done, uh, but it's, I, I think we need to be very careful of getting stuck in a local maximum. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the space shuttle was, something that was really stuck in a local maximum for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we don't want to be that situation. I mean, fr frankly, wh why, is, why does Soyuz still fly? I mean, Karlov is probably turning in his grave right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, if, if you told Karlov and the other guys that they'd still be, we'd still be flying Soyuz in 2020, they'd be like, that's crazy. <laughs> Yet we are. Um, so we don't want to be in that situation, you know. It's a solid vehicle, it's just like it's time to move on. There's really just one thing that matters that is a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. Uh, that, that's the one thing that matters. Um, and it needs to be reasonably big uh, or your payload to non-payload ratio will be kind of whacked. Uh, you know, what would be good. So, just like you wouldn't want a super tanker growing, like, you, when you, you know, container ships, you have a container ship with thousands of containers. You, you don't, you know, have like a bunch of tiny ships with little outboards on them cruising across the Pacific. That would be silly. Um, so, you have big ships f when you want to go long distances with serious cargo. So, we need a fairly big, but definitely rapidly and completely reusable rocket. This is the fundamental thing. Without that, we're going nowhere. I think Falcon 9 and Dragon have, the, the, their asymptoting, the, their, their, te their technology architecture is asymptoting, meaning like it, it, it really would not make sense to have a Block 6 Falcon 9, you know, from where we are right now. It just doesn't make sense. Um, that's why we have a big focus in terms of new technology development on Starship. Um, for Falcon and, and Falcon and Dragon are kind of like operational vehicles at this point, so they're they're they're, they're good products. They're operational, um, but but there's not really. But, but we, we need a whole new architecture, and that's what Starship is about. Mm -hmm. um, and Starship needs to be fully and completely reusable. And rapidly so. Um, I mean, it's it's being designed for about an uh, you know, to to be relaunch, relaunched an hour after landing, mm -hmm. with with zero nominal work. Like if you could have scheduled maintenance, you, or you could have like something like a spork issue, just like commercial aircraft. But you're expected. The, the only thing you expect to change on a regular basis is propellant. Um, and it's got to be fast. So um, now, now the, for the ship, 
you, you, you've got to wait, unless you're launching Dewey's from the equator, you, you've got to have, figure out some way to get, get the, the ship uh, orbital ground track to pass over the landing site, otherwise you're too far away. Um, so the ship maybe, it might take, you know, three orbits, four orbits maybe, to get back over the, the, the launch site. Uh, but, but I think we, we want to aim for a capability of three flights a day for the ship. Wow. And most of which is taken up with getting the orbital, you know, ground track to come over the, the launch site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then an hour for everything else. <laughs>